Jordan Peterson is a Christian. He's said so many times, but it seems to me that Peterson, for all his discussion of the biblical stories, has not given his own religious beliefs a second thought, or even a first thought for that matter. When someone asks him a very simple question about his Christianity, he either claims that the question is ambiguous, or he flounders to come up with a coherent answer on the spot, as if he's never considered the question. Questions like, do you believe in God, or do you believe that Jesus rose from the dead? You know, the core tenets of Christianity, the religion in which he claims membership. You'd think a Christian of Jordan Peterson's intelligence would have at least thought to ask himself those questions, but I think I know why he hasn't. Or, if he has, I think I know why he refuses to provide clear answers to his audience. From what I can tell, it's because he doesn't want to be forced into saying that Christianity is not literally true. He seems to be trying to save face with Christianity, or with his lingering belief in God. I think Peterson believes that there is not any convincing evidence for the historical, scientific, or theological tenets of Christianity, otherwise he would have presented it to Sam Harris or anyone else who's asked him these questions, but he doesn't want to admit that this is the case, or that this is what he believes. This could be for a variety of reasons. He's emotionally invested in his self-image as a Christian, he wants to adopt some choice ideas from Christianity but doesn't feel justified doing so unless he calls himself a Christian, or, and I think this is his true reason, Peterson is someone who, as the philosopher Daniel Dennett put it, believes in belief. That is, Peterson thinks the world would be a better place if Christianity were true, and if people believed it. So he really doesn't want to say that it isn't true, either historically or theologically, because it would dissuade people from being Christians. But I'm getting ahead of myself here. For this video, I'd like to focus on the idea that Peterson is trying to save face with Christianity, and I'd like to show you what led me to that conclusion. So let's go through this one Jordan Peterson video at a time. Do you believe that Jesus rose again from the dead? Literally. I find it, I cannot answer that question. And the reason is because... Okay, let me think about it for a minute, see if I can come up with a reasonable answer to that. Well, the first answer would be, it depends on what you mean by Jesus. A historical human being that existed. In a body. And in a body. In a body. And yes. then it was a physical body, and then it was on Earth. Yes. That it was on Earth, and that was literally, uh, was literally, um, uh, it came back to life after death. Okay, so it was on Earth, right? Yes. Not like on Mars or something. No, it was on Earth. Okay. And, and it was a physical body. Yes. Okay. And you said it was on Earth? Yes! Look, Jordan, it's one thing to be clear about your terms, but I think you know full well what Tim meant when he asked you this question. There's no metaphorical interpretation to be had, there's no loophole to avoid the question, and Tim is doing a great job of forcing you to actually answer the question. That it was on Earth, and that was literally, uh, was literally, um, uh, it came back to life after death. I would say that at the moment I'm agnostic about that issue. Which is a lot different than saying, I don't believe that it happened. Okay, well, I'm agnostic about it too, in the sense that I accept that it could possibly have happened. However, I live my life as though it didn't, because none of the evidence presented to me thus far has convinced me that it did. So, is Jordan Peterson going to present any evidence? Well, no. Instead, he's going to appeal to wishful thinking and the limits of human existence to try and weave some kind of plausibility out of... nothing. Which is a lot different than saying, I don't believe that it happened. That's and very I interesting. I can't explain why. I, when, I get to the, when I get to the New Testament in my biblical lectures, I'll spend like six hours trying to explain what I think about that. Okay, needless to say, I have not spent six hours listening to Jordan Peterson's answer to a very simple question, and I'm glad I haven't because he has just recently said with regard to the literal historical resurrection... With regards to the resurrection, my, my 
apart from saying what I just said, I would say that I need to think about that for about three more years before I would even venture an, an answer beyond what I've already given. So for anyone who is about to accuse me of not actually researching his answer, fear not, he still doesn't have an actual answer. Anyway, back to the video. But one of the things I have come to learn over the last 15 years in particular, particular is that the world is a very, very strange place. It's far stranger than we think. And what we don't understand about consciousness and its relationship with the body, we fill many books. And you could say the same thing about our relationship with time and perhaps corporality and vulnerability and all and death for that matter. So I, I don't understand the structure of being well enough to, to, to make my way through the complexities of the resurrection story. Well, it could happen, so I'm going to remain 100% agnostic about it. And leprechauns could exist, therefore I am going to stay 100% agnostic about them. I mean, honestly, I don't know enough about the complexities of evolution and the old stories of leprechauns with their pots of gold, so I'm not willing to say I don't believe in leprechauns. You will follow the agnostic code. We cannot know with certainty if God or Christ exists. They could. Then again, there could be a giant reptilian bird in charge of everything. Can we be certain there isn't? No, so it's pointless to talk about. Now say it with me. I don't believe that it's reasonable to boil it down to something like, do you believe that or do you not believe it? You know, it's not, it's... it's... Yes? Jordan. I present you with Claim X. You've agreed that you understand what that claim is. It's a physical, historical, literal, bodily resurrection on Earth about a historical human being who we now identify as Jesus. You have presented no evidence for this claim, so the only rational answer you can give is, no, I don't believe that it happened, although I'm not willing to discount the possibility that it might have happened. That is the only rational answer you can give, and I think you know that, but you clearly don't want to say it. I don't know what the limits... I don't know the limits of human possibility. I don't well, know... That's an intriguing answer, and it surprises me. Um, uh, you know, because I had sort of very much had you down as somebody who um, saw these stories as essentially projections of the human consciousness. Oh, they are. They are that. And I could say, I could say, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ symbolizes the necessity of the psyche to undergo a, se a sequence of deaths and rebirths in its attainment of the ideal. Oh, and yes. That's what I expected you to say. But oh, yes. you, you are There's agnostic no about that's the, true. the little it's, fact. It's a phoenix. It's a phoenix story. This seems to be Jordan Peterson's favorite well, distraction tactic, not just for his audience, but for himself as well, where he says, you know, maybe if I just focus on the psychological merits of Christianity, then I won't have to say anything about the, you know, actual merits of Christianity, like as a religion. Fortunately, Tim doesn't let him go down his favorite rabbit hole. It's a Phoenix story. But, but you but, like not about the actual fact, historical. Well, the thing is, is that just because that's true doesn't mean that's all that's true about it. But it does mean that we have no reason to believe that anything more about it is true. Just because the moral lesson you've gleaned from the story is true, that does not, in any way, prove that the story itself actually happened. You have no reason to believe that, Jordan, but you just can't admit it. Just because that's true doesn't mean that's all that's true about it. Because I also don't know, so here, for example, in order to stay alive, it's necessary to get the balance between death and life right in your psyche and your physiology, because death keeps you alive. Your cells die and, and regenerate all the time. And if you die too much, then you die. And if you don't die enough, well, then you also die. You end up with cancer or something like that. You have to get the balance between death and life right in order to survive. I don't know... What would happen if you got the balance between death and life exactly right? You'd probably be extremely unremarkable, at least in the biological sense of your cells growing and dying. I think this is a really stupid thing to ascribe some sort of transcendent properties to. Ooh, what if you got your cholesterol just right? Who knows what would happen then? I'm sorry, Jordan, but what is this? 
Do you really think that getting this kind of balance between life and death just right would grant someone the superpower of being able to come back from the dead after rotting for three days? So I think by now you can see what I mean when I say that Jordan Peterson is trying to save face with Christianity. He seems to realize that the only rational answer he can give is no, but he desperately doesn't want to say it. The next video is called Jordan Peterson, Do You Believe That God Exists? So okay. people often ask me, do you believe in God? Which I don't, I don't like that question. First of all, it's an attempt to, to, it's an attempt to box me in, in a sense. And the reason that it's an attempt to box me in is because the question is asked so that I can be firmly placed on one side of a two, of a binary argument. You're allowed to offer qualifiers, Jordan. You are aware of that, right? You can say, yes, but, or no, but. This is no more an attempt to box you in than asking if someone is a liberal or conservative is an attempt to box them in. This is just a common first step kind of question, which people ask to get a general feel for your position, and which they accept may not be as simple as yes or no. So that I can be firmly placed on one side of a two, of a binary argument. And... And the reason I don't like to answer it is because, A, I don't like to be boxed in, and B, because I don't know what the person means by believe or God. And they think they know. And the probability that they construe belief and construe God the same way I do is virtually zero. If that's the case, then you say, no, I don't believe in God. Jordan, if you are that confident that the other person is talking about a completely different kind of belief and a completely different kind of God, then you should feel very comfortable saying no. Now, people watching this video, tell me if you disagree, but it seems to me that Jordan Peterson is desperate to make sure that the phrase, I don't believe in God, never escapes his mouth in any way, shape, or form, even with qualifiers. So, it's, it's a question that doesn't work for me on multiple levels of analysis, but but, strangely enough, just as we were talking, I, the answer to that question popped into my head. Wait, 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 hold on. You're an intellectual Christian, you've been a Christian for years and talked about it for years, and the answer to this most basic question, do you believe in God, just now popped into your head. I'm sorry, but does anyone in the audience need any more proof that Peterson has not thought this through? I think this, more than anything, demonstrates that Peterson is not interested in examining his own beliefs or the religion itself. Unless, of course, someone forces him to. The answer to that question popped into my head. I act as if God exists. Now, you can decide for yourself whether that means whether, that I believe in him, so to speak. But I act as if he exists. Congratulations, Jordan. You have finally managed to at least kind of answer one of the most basic questions in this field of debate. You have identified yourself, at least somewhat, as an agnostic theist, someone who acts as though God exists. Likewise, I identify myself as an agnostic atheist. I admit that I don't know for sure, but I act as though God does not exist. Now, as I was making this video, I came across this relatively recent article in the National Post where we finally get a straight answer out of Jordan Peterson. It seems that, when the cameras are off and when it's clear that the interviewer is not going to press you very hard, Peterson can be made to just say no. When the interviewer asked, are you a Christian, do you believe in God? Peterson responded, I think the proper response to that is no, but I'm afraid he might exist. So now let's revisit the resurrection and see if Jordan Peterson has anything different to say this time. Is his resurrection real? Well, his spirit lives on. That's certainly the case. Ladies and gentlemen, please return to your seats. We're about to derail the entire fucking train, so brace yourselves. In what sense do you mean spirit, just to qualify that? How, well, let, let's imagine that a spirit is a pattern of being. And we know that patterns can exist, in, patterns can be transmitted across multiple substrates, right? Vinyl, electronic impulses, air, vibrations in your ear, neurological patterns, dance. It's all the translation of what you might describe as a spirit, right? It's, it's that pattern. It's independent of its material substrate. Well, Christ's spirit lives on. 
It's, 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 a, it's had a massive effect across time. Nobody means it that way except you, Jordan. Please just answer the question. Well, is that an answer to the question? Did his body resurrect? Holy shit, finally. Did his body resurrect? I don't know. I don't know. It is, the accounts aren't clear, for one thing. What the accounts mean isn't clear. I don't know what happens to a person if they bring themselves completely into alignment. I've had intimations of what that might mean. We don't understand the world very well. We don't understand how the world could be mastered if it was mastered completely. We don't know how an individual might be able to manage that. We don't know what transformations that might make possible. Ugh. Fine. Okay. This is just the same old answer. I'm just going to be irrationally agnostic about it and maybe throw out some crazy explanation for how it might possibly have happened just so I don't have to say, no, I don't believe it. I'm sorry, but what a half-assed answer. If this doesn't sound like creating plausible deniability for yourself and saving face, I don't know what does. I don't know what happens to a person if they bring themselves completely into alignment. I've had intimations of what that might mean. We don't understand the world very well. We don't understand how the world could be mastered if it was mastered completely. We don't know how an individual might be able to manage that. We don't know what transformations that might make possible. You believe him? I want a frank answer, Commander. Not for a second. I'm amazed he even proposed it. Me too, Jordy. Me too. So as I stated at the beginning of this video, Jordan Peterson is, apparently, trying to save face with Christianity. He hasn't given the religion itself a lot of thought, and this is because he doesn't want to undermine it, either for himself, or for everyone around him, or both. Why would he do this? Well, I'll explore that more in another video.